when you take that normal bass groove and suddenly change a little fill, it's like something that would be so small and like rush or yes or something. But in Green Day, it's like, wow, they changed the bass part. That's a big deal. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lone University. Today, we're jumping into some pop punk for the first time here on this channel, and I don't want it to be the last time, so let me know what else I should check out. But over the last few months, I've seen some requests for Longview by Green Day come in, which is from their third studio album and major label debut, Dookie, released in 1994, which is arguably the album that surely put this band on the map and was a breakout record. I think the first Green Day song I heard was When I Come Around, and many years later, I played American Idiot in a local musical, and I always kind of wrote Green Day off as just being radio rock or something. And after playing their songs, especially American Idiot, the whole album, I gained a lot of appreciation. But I've not gone back and checked out some of this earlier stuff. I know Longview has sort of a bass intro. Time for me to critically listen. So let's get into it. Longview by Green Day. Shuffle, swing. One to the one to the one to the one. Yeah. Of course, I've heard this intro. Haven't really listened to the full song and wrapped my head around it. Good feel. Got a walking bass line feel, which I have a soft spot for. Going between the one seven so between e and d sounds down tuned yeah just going between those two chords that have vamped so far i love this kind of walking bass line inspiration i don't know if that all that was what inspired bassist mike dirt to do this a walking bass line but i just you know growing up as kind of a jazz player going to college playing a lot of jazz in there it's i got a lot of background from that i love a good walking bass line this ticks all the boxes for me it's got a gritty pick sound. This sounds very P-based sound, but I have some research here on what he used on this record. It seems like it's been debated a lot. Some people say because he was apparently using a Gibson G3 in this video that that's what he used on the record. But then there's other sources from BassPlayer.com, Bass Player Magazine, that said he used an active P-bass, a PJ bass, but it was solo to just the neck pickup. So in essence, it was just a P-bass. So... I'm going to go with that because it definitely sounds like a P-bass tone. You know, all these bands from this era, Blink-182, Fall Out Boy, uh, Sum 41, of course, Green Day came before them, but that whole scene just has that very crunchy up front, very signature P-bass fat sound. It's kind of a, it kind of puts a timestamp on that era for bass tones for me based on what limited exposure I had to a lot of those bands at the time. So we're going to go with that. Obviously sounds down tuned. And I love these double stops he's doing here. Okay, that must be the Gibson G3. I'm just reading this in advance, doing a little research. So first thing I want to say about Green Day, bands from this era, bands of this style, they have such limited orchestration that they got really clever at the use of when to pull something out, when to lay out, when to just sing over a bass line and some basic drums with even out much of a beat. You know, obviously there's a beat going on here, but it's not it's not like a verse or a chorus beat. It's just kind of a rhythmic ostinato, if you will. And you got the bass line really kind of leading the melodic figure, and then the vocals are obviously coming in over that. But when that guitar comes in, that's such great, simple use of just good dynamics. You know, this could have been a guitar intro in some way, shape, or form, but they held the guitar out until it was needed for impact. That's something all of these bands from that era, pop punk, punk in general, they do so well because they don't have pads and strings and sometimes three guitars. It's very stripped down. You know, Green Day's a three piece. So that's great songwriting, great understanding of how big can we get? Let's cut that in half and save all three of us for when it's important. Good swung bass line. I love that. <laughs> I'm going to play it in standard because I'm tuned in standard. This is like he's ringing that open D string in. Getting that major seven rub. And I saw, went ahead and soloed to my neck pickup for that P bass sound. So I'm basically turning this pickup off. A P bass normally has just this P pickup. This is a precision pickup, just epoxied in this soap bar housing from EMG. So it's going to get the same sound or very similar. And it's active, like this source here says. 
Nonetheless, I love that. Really good. Let's keep going. I definitely, definitely haven't seen this music video. I know that. Adding in some movement. What a great songwriting tool just to leave the guitar out completely unless it's the chorus. That makes that chorus so impactful just by coming in on guitar. That's it. There's no like bigger guitar part. There's no bigger effect that was kicked on. Billy just played or didn't play. That's all they had to work with. I like that. That just reminds me of a problem I've seen a lot in modern bands. They have so much instrumentation, so much layering, two and three and four guitar parts, program sense and stuff. Granted, that might not apply to this scene of this genre, but you can write a great song with just very little. It's about knowing how to use it. Sometimes when I hear these older songs, Blink-182, you name it, I'm just like, man, they could do so much with so little. Really cool lesson in there if you really think about it. But I love how this bass part on verse 2 adds a little more movement, but they are really nailing that swung sound. Where you kind of make that pickup note a little louder, that's classic jazz, you know. kind of thing really leaning into that real swung sound it kind of gives it that bob i mean you can't not bob your head listening to this i love that the feel of this I sure as hell can do it really certain myself. authoritative downstrokes there I'm feeling like a dog in heat. Bart and on the summer street i lock the door to my own cell and i lost a Back in. Oh, that's cool. Double chorus. That's cool. Little ad libs and fills he's putting in there just give it a bit more liveliness as it goes on. Obviously, the song's very lively right off the bat. Good dynamics. We talked about that. But little things like that, when they're working with so little, you know, the chorus is just three chords, really. And it goes back to this main bass vamp. By changing one note of that bass intro that's basically kind of burned in your head already, changing one little part of it gives it enough variation to give the song some serious direction. Again, doing so much with so little is kind of the hallmark of this scene. It's really cool to me because I also am guilty of being someone who's played in progressive metal bands and progressive rock bands and jazz. It's kind of like a Moore's Moore, Ingve kind of thing, right? I need to also remember that you can do so much with just a couple chords and really just think about how can I change one thing that will make such an impact on the song? And I think little bass parts like that are the answer. I, I like that the bass is so pronounced in a scene where not all bands kind of had it that way. Again, as I said, I maybe said this in the beginning, but when I worked at a hardware store in college, that was kind of the, one of the first times I was really hearing Green Day. When I come around was constantly. It was just in that department store music rotation. 
And I was like, man, the bass is so clear. That's the last thing I'm able to hear. You know, I get this a lot on my videos. It's like, how have you never heard this bass line? You can rarely hear the bass lines when it comes on a commercial on your TV or in a store. You know, the bass line, you got to put headphones on and sit down and really look for it half the time. So yeah, I might have heard the chorus of the song, but that doesn't mean I know the bass line and the music intimately. So that's why it's fun to sit down on this channel and critically listen. I might have heard the song, but that doesn't mean I know... Again, all the nuances of the bass part, I kind of hear something new every time, and this song is a classic case of that. You know, I didn't know those little fills were in there. Really catchy. So it's good to kind of hear these and kind of crack open under the hood and see what genius is going on there, despite this being a simple bass line. But they had a really good use of not just having guitar, vocals, drums, and bass just be this thing pushed in the background. It's like the bass got a lot of airtime. And these kind of songs and this, you know, Green Day in general, you know, one of the first songs I learned from them was from American Idiot, Holiday or whatever. I was like, this, this bass line's like the backbone of the piece. I really appreciated that as a bass play, even though the songs were kind of simple in structure. I just love that bass wasn't also simplified and relegated to the back where we usually always are. It was very upfront. It was an equal contributor to the how the song came across, not just something to round out the sound in post-production. So, best thing I'm gleaning from this song. Really cool. Little movement. I love this dynamic. Because you're just waiting for like a... And the way the bass tone and that guitar tone blend are just, I mean, it's, it's not like when the guitar comes in, the bass is just gone, just disappears. You still hear that crunch. That's what gives the guitar part that width. And when it's mixed and blended really well, you don't know the bass is contributing as much as it does. You know, it has its own spot as the bass part, but in a really good produced record, the bass kind of gives life to all of the other instruments, gives life to the heavy guitar tone, gives life to the kick drum, can even give life to the snare in some situations. So bass tone's real important, guys. This is a good example. That open string just makes it really cool and just, it gives it some attitude. You know, if it was... Like if he just went up here and went, okay, that'd be cool. But something about that, it's like just enough zing for a little attitude. It just gives attitude to that part. That one clash, major seven, one half step away. So it's basically, in a sense, it's a minor second. You split an octave. So now we call it a major seven, but it still kind of has that same dissonance. Pretty cool. Cool. Ending the way it started. That is a catchy, catchy bass part. Super catchy. Well, as these bands are, pop punk in general, punk rock in general, it's a lot of fun to listen to. And again, it's, it reminds me that you can be so effective and dynamic and impactful with such little instrumentation and honestly, a very simple song structure. I mean, there's really two parts, right? The chorus and then the bass was the intro, was the outro, was the verses. So when you take that normal bass groove and suddenly change a little fill, it's like something that would be so small and like Rush or Yes or something. King Crimson, something like that, you wouldn't even really notice. But in Green Day, it's like, wow, they changed the bass part. That's a big deal. And I like that simplicity.
I like the bass tone. As I said just a minute ago, I love that Green Day have always kind of given equal spotlight to everyone. Granted, there's only three of them. I don't know if they had a touring guitar player for four at one point. I feel like I might have seen that. But nonetheless, just great usage of the three voices they have. Not excluding the actual voice, I just mean instrumentation. So it was good to get down and listen to Longview under the microscope. Uh, I, there's some, some nuances I hadn't heard before, but I would love to check out more bands from this scene. A little later, again, Blink-182, Sum 41, uh, bands like Rancid even. I, I know of them, but I've not appreciated their bass work like I probably should have. So light me up with some recommendations. Again, we haven't done much from this kind of scene inside of the musical family tree on the channel. I've not been neglecting it for any other reason that just don't know where to start. But thank you for requesting Longview. Uh, these are fun tracks, and they have some really great genius bass work, tones, the whole nine yards. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time. Cheers, and I got that backwards. Love you all. <laughs> see you later.